it's not easy to become a famous mathematician these days. It was probably even harder back in the 1700s, but that's exactly what Euler did after solving this problem. And when I say solve, I don't mean the approximate answer, I mean the exact answer. Anyone can start just adding up these numbers and get pretty close to 1.64, but that's not exactly satisfying, is it? There are many ways to solve this, but let's do it the way that Euler did that brought him immediate fame. Start with the Taylor series representation for sine x. This is something you probably see in Calc 2. Divide both sides by x, so we have sine x over x as this new representation. And I want you to pay very close attention to the coefficient of the x squared term, that minus 1 over 3 factorial, that's minus 1 over 6. That will come up later. Remember the good old fundamental theorem of algebra? We can factor polynomials into linear factors using the polynomial's roots. Now think about how you factor basic polynomials. Typically we think of two numbers which multiply to the constant term. The constant term of our polynomial is 1, and it's an infinite polynomial, so the numbers here all have to multiply to 1. The only way that that's going to work, unless we want to use a bunch of fractions, is to make all the constant terms in the linear factors 1. And we know when we plug in the roots, the zeros of the polynomial for x, it should be 0. So each factor should be 0 at one of the roots. What are the roots of this polynomial? Well, it's tough to see on the right-hand side, but if we look at sine x over x, well, that's 0 when the numerator is 0, and sine x is 0 at n times pi, where n is an integer. Well, we can't have 0 here, otherwise we'd be dividing by 0, but every non-zero integer multiple of pi will be a root of this polynomial. In other words, when we plug in plus or minus pi, plus or minus 2 pi, plus or minus 3 pi, and so on for x, we have to get zeros at one of these factors. The way that we do that is make it 1 minus x over the root for all of the roots, and so we have the factorization here. If you're up to date on your factoring formulas, you may notice that this is factored into a bunch of difference of squares. So each pair we can combine into 1 minus x squared over the root squared, and we have another factorization representation. If we were to multiply this all out, and then collect all of the x squared terms, pull out the x squared term, the coefficient of the x squared term would be the minus 1 over pi squared, minus 1 over 4 pi squared, minus 1 over 9 pi squared, and so on. So the coefficients all have a negative, they all have an over pi squared, factor out the minus 1 over pi squared, and what we'll see is that coefficient is the sum we were actually asking about in the first place. So the coefficient of x squared is minus 1 over pi squared times the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared. And since the equations are equal, the coefficient of the x squared term on the left has to be the coefficient of the x squared term on the right. This is sometimes called matching coefficients. And so now all we have to do is solve for the sum. 1 over 3 factorial, that's 1 over 6. Cancel the negative on both sides and multiply by pi squared, and there we have the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared as pi squared over 6. It's pretty incredible. If you want to see a really cool problem where this result is used, click the video on the screen right here. I'll see you in that one.